the Pythagoreans got a little bit weird about math. Their basic idea was that math, numbers, were able to translate and describe all facets of reality. Everything at its heart, if you were to boil it down and condense it and understand it at its most fundamental level, could be represented, or you could even see that it was, a number. Now, this idea is powerful. Math is incredibly useful for describing the world and, and picking apart how it works and showing the way things are. You can think of math as the most powerful map in the world. And what that means is that you are able to take this world around us and represent it in faithful detail and model it using math. You can use numbers to show the speed that things fall at. Physics is all about mapping this world in numbers and equations and basically saying this is how the world works. Now I'm going to tell you a little bit about the most mind-bogglingly crazy theorem that has ever been proved in mathematics, and it's called Gödel's Theorem. Now the way you actually spell that is G-O with the umlauts, D-E-L, Gödel. Kurt Gödel was insanely brilliant. What he did was he poked a hole in the idea that you could model everything using math forever. And the way he did it was insanely clever. Now, like the Pythagoreans, some mathematicians, up until even very recently, had this idea that the entire universe could be described, broken down, predicted, understood using mathematics, and there would be no holes left. There would be nothing left that we couldn't reach into with this map. It would be the map that was as accurate as the real thing. We've got it. We understand reality as it is. This has huge philosophical implications. This is a big deal. And it's kind of almost a little bit arrogant to say, we understand the, if not everything, then the key to understanding everything, which is really a cool concept. His theorem went like this. If you can describe everything in math, you have to be able to describe statements in math, logical statements. And so he came up with a really ingenious numbering system using prime numbers, exponents of prime numbers, to be able to represent all of logical notation. So he's able to say statements about logic in math using numbers. Now, that's cool in its own right. Now, what he then did was he wrote a statement in math that said the following. This statement cannot be proven using math, using the basic rules of arithmetic. That's a problem, and here's why. Because you can either prove that, or you can't. If you can prove it, then it's a contradiction, and the whole of math collapses, and suddenly we can't trust it. Because contradictions are a really big deal. They mean that something has seriously gone wrong, and that you don't know what's true anymore, and the system is broken. It's giving you wonky answers. So, the statement, again, was this statement, talking about itself, cannot be proven within the system of arithmetic. And so, if you can prove it, that's a huge problem. It means that the system itself is inconsistent. Now, if you cannot derive that statement using the system, then there's a hole in it. And there's at least one thing that exists that cannot be proven from within the system, which means it's not a perfect map. It's not a map that's fully able to describe reality. And so it's called the incompleteness theorem because it proves that mathematics or any system, any system that's put together that is as complex or more complex than arithmetic, with the basic rules like numbers go on to infinity and what and addition and subtraction and multiplication and division, anything that complicated or more complicated is necessarily built into it, can't escape it, forever doomed to be either inconsistent, which is a major problem, or incomplete, meaning that there's some things missing. Now, Joseph and I argue all the time about what this means. Whether it means that you can't trust, like, reason, or whether it means that there are some things that are, are transcendent, or we're not really sure what it means, and neither are the experts on this theorem. But what it did was it cracked a hole in our understanding of the universe. And in a way, that hole is incredibly exciting. It says that there are things that we don't understand in not just a not yet sort of way, like we're coming up on the final fringes, but in a the horizon keeps moving the closer we get to it kind of way. There are two books that I read in a logic class that covered this topic. One of them is called Girdle's Proof, which goes into some detail about how the proof actually works. And if you really want to get into the details and study some recreational mathematics, this is really cool stuff. It goes into set theory and explains the idea, and it really does a pretty good job. The second one, which I haven't finished yet, is more of a biography. 
that explains the proof and paradox of Kurt Gödel, and it's by Rebecca Goldstein called Incompleteness. I've only read the first third, and so I can't recommend it f completely, because I frankly don't know, but I guess my understanding is incomplete as regards this book. <laughs> If you're looking to learn something new and fill in your map so you can be a little less incomplete, please consider subscribing so that you can learn more about logic and ethics and hands-on history with Good and Basic. Thank you very much.